Hi everyone, this is our first lecture in astronomy and we're going to be starting with some basic definitions. And I decided to put up this little thing from Failbook to get us started, why we need to know some basic definitions before we go any further. Um, so here's a person who's asking, wait a second, Pluto's not a planet anymore? Asking this last August, so it's been, not been a planet for a long time. Um, and then so somebody else says, well, what is it? Is it a star? Uh, well, it's not a planet. Uh, it's a moon. Wait, do we have two moons? What's the deal? So obviously these people are all very, very stupid. Um, you probably know more than they do already, but it just gives you a sense of why it's so important that we know what's going on and what these basic definitions are. So we're going to start with a few. Remember, you should be taking notes on this. You don't necessarily need to write down everything. If you're taking notes on the computer, you might want to try to find some similar images on Google and put them in, because that may help you remember some things. Um, and of course, you can always re-watch this video. Don't forget that you could pause the video if you need more time to write something down. I'm going to be moving through it fairly quickly um, because YouTube only lets me do 10 minute videos, but you can always pause it to write something down if you need a little bit more time. So here we go. This first thing that you see in the picture is actually a picture of the sun taken from a spacecraft and through a telescope that allows it, us to look safely at the sun. And of course the sun is a star. Hopefully we all know that, we learned that a long time ago in elementary school. So what is a star? A star is the most fundamental object that we study in astronomy. Everything else is basically based off of the definition of a star. So we'll start with what is a star. And a star is by definition a ball of gas. There is no solid surface in the sun. It's gas all the way through. Um, mainly it's hydrogen and helium, and that's the case in other stars as well. These things are big. They're millions of kilometers across. Um, for comparison, the Earth's diameter is about 12,000 kilometers. So this is a thousand times bigger across. You could fit a thousand Earths if you went from here to here. That would be a thousand Earths. And Stars, by definition, produce energy by nuclear fusion. There's other things in space that are balls of gas. Um, what makes a star different is that it makes energy by nuclear fusion. That is, it's sticking small atoms together to make larger ones. Later on in the semester, we'll talk more about what does that mean and how does a star make energy by nuclear fusion. Next, we have, well, hopefully at least this first one is familiar to you. Obviously, that's Saturn. This is Mars. That's a giant canyon right there. It's as big as North America, if you want a sense of scale on that. That canyon is basically the size of the continental United States. And this is Neptune. Neptune, you may remember, is the Greek god of the sea. So the fact that Neptune is a blue color is probably the origin of its name. These pictures aren't to scale. Saturn is many, many, many times bigger than Mars, and it's even several times bigger than Neptune, so totally not to scale. Of course, what these things have in common is that they're planets. And what makes a planet? Well, um, when that whole controversy about Pluto happened, a definition was come up with that was deliberately written to exclude Pluto. Um, they had other reasons for thinking that Pluto wasn't a planet. We'll actually talk about that in class a little bit. Um, but they came up with a definition that covers what we think of as planets, but doesn't include Pluto. And this is that formal definition. This is the most official definition you're going to see all year. The first thing is that a planet has to orbit a star. Um, obviously, these planets, Saturn, Neptune, Mars, orbit the Sun, but we've now discovered planets around other stars. So planets are things that orbit stars. They have to be round. There's lots of things that orbit the Sun that are not round. For instance, there's many asteroids which are um, randomly shaped. Some of them are kind of potato shaped. Um, but a planet 
is round. And this has to do with its mass. Um, gravity tends to make things round if your mass is big enough. And a planet has a mass that's big enough that gravity can make it round. Both those first two points do apply to Pluto. But this third one doesn't. And I'll spend a little bit more time on this one. What was defined, and this is how we get rid of Pluto as a planet, is that planets have done what they call clearing its orbit. And to clear your orbit means that anything else that's orbiting the sun at the same distance as that planet must be orbiting the planet and not the sun. So let's just look at that in a little bit more detail. You may not want to write down all of the details of this page. I just wrote it out in words so you can get a better sense of it. Um, you know, put down something in your notes that gives you a sense of what clearing the orbit is. So let's start with Earth. If you think about things that are orbiting the sun, the only thing that's basically at the same distance from the sun as Earth is, is the moon. And the moon is orbiting Earth. So since that's the only thing at the same distance and it's orbiting Earth, not the sun, we have cleared our orbit. So we're a planet. In the case of Jupiter, there's lots of things that are at the same distance from the sun as Jupiter, but it turns out that those things are all orbiting Jupiter. So in other words, they are moons of Jupiter. So that means that Jupiter has cleared its orbit. Now, the biggest asteroid out there is something called Ceres. And there's lots and lots of things that are at the same distance from the sun as Ceres. These are all between Mars and Jupiter. And there's many, many millions of things at that same distance. And those things happen to be orbiting the sun. They are not orbiting Ceres. So you would say Ceres has not cleared its orbit. Pluto, the one we really are interested in, well, there's lots of things that are at the same distance from the sun as Pluto. These tend to be comets. There's a few of them that are orbiting Pluto. Pluto has four moons. But there's also thousands of other comets out there at the same distance from the sun as Pluto. And those things are not orbiting Pluto. They're orbiting the sun. So Pluto has not cleared its orbit. It's like Ceres. So, in fact, people would say that Pluto is much more like a comet than it is like a planet. So, when you've got things like Ceres and Pluto that are orbiting the Sun, that are big enough to be round, Ceres is big enough to be round and so is Pluto, but that have not cleared their orbits, we call those dwarf planets. So that's what's the deal with Pluto. One more real quick definition on this one, and then I'm going to go to a second video in the interest of length on YouTube. Here's a bunch of moons. Um, you can see them. These are all actually scaled to size with um, the Earth and the Earth's moon. You can see our moon is actually one of the sort of bigger moons out there. Um, so if you look at these, these are only some of the moons, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, those things actually have dozens of moons, and Pluto has four. Uh, Mercury and Venus, by the way, don't have any moons. But any natural object that is orbiting either a planet or a dwarf planet is considered a moon. So our moon is a moon because it's orbiting us. This thing called Charon is a moon because it's orbiting Pluto, and so forth. These things are moons because they orbit planets or they orbit dwarf planets like Pluto or the asteroid. Ida. So those are moons. This lecture does have a second half. I will be picking up with that in another video, which you should also watch today. Um, so this will be continued in the next video.